<laughs> Welcome to another exciting installment of the Six Patterns videos. We are on a, a special edition journey. We're journeying through 25 pearls in pulmonary pathology. But and it's not just 25 pearls. It is the top yeah, 25 that's pearls. That's true. I mean, the you can most make, important. You can make up 25 pearls about diagnosing aspiration. Chronic hypersensitivity and pneumonitis, but yeah. this is the top 25 pearls. Of all pulmonary pathology. All pulmonary. And what are we on number-wise? This is number four. Number Pearl four. number four. Pearl number four. Okay. So, Max, take it away. It looks to me like we've got a surgical wedge biopsy. We've got a surgical wedge biopsy, so a little bit different than some of what we've looked at so far. And in the surgical wedge biopsy... This beautiful thing about scan slides is you can see a power that you don't get to see under the 0.5x. 0.5x. So we've got a portion of lung parenchyma with multiple pulmonary lobules here. It looks totally normal. And then we have this. And I always like to talk to our visitors about what a lesion might look like on CT scan if we're looking at the pathology. So if we look at this pathology for a minute, and we say, okay, this is normal lung out here. That's going to have the normal blackness of right. air on a CT right. scan. And then we have this lesion right here. Its borders are going to be ill-defined, hazy, yeah, fuzzy. And, and it's then, not solid. And, and it's not going to be solid. So this is not going to be a nodule of consolidation. It's not going to be bright white. Nope. This is going to be a ground glass. A ground glass nodule. And it's going to be PET positive probably. Right. So, I'm thinking. What size are we talking here? Six millimeters? Eight? Well, no, this, maybe this is one. five millimeters yeah, yeah. right here. So Almost a centimeter. Probably, this, uh, it's wow. about a centimeter. Wow. So, we're looking at a wedge biopsy. We've got a lesion that we think would look like a ground glass nodule. Yeah. So, our big question is what this is. Yeah. Right? They've wedged it out. I don't think it's a granuloma. I don't think it's a granuloma. But we really have to look at the cytology for these types of lesions, right? You can't just, you can't make this diagnosis from low power. You have to go down and look at the cytology. So here we are down on the cytology and, ooh. Wow. You know, I'm reminded of pearl number three. Pearl number three. Don't diagnose adenocarcinoma in the setting of acute injury. Resist the yeah. urge. Yes. Resist the urge. But I don't see any acute injury here. No. But I see a ton of atypia. And to me, this atypia looks pretty damn dramatic. Well, it looks malignant. Now, <laughs> well I mean, said. frankly, it looks malignant, well said. right? Yep. Now, in comparison to pearl number three, and if you want, you can go back and watch pearl number three, but these cells are standing up tall. Rigid. There is no windswept appearance. These are rigid cells. They are standing up tall off of the off of their um, base fibrotic stroma. Yeah. I don't think there is a basement membrane. Like ah, I'm giving gonna, away the answer here, huh? We're going to get okay. to that. But see how they're standing up tall like this? Rigid. Yeah. The long axis of the nucleus is perpendicular yeah. to the basal aspect yeah. of the cell. Tombstones. As opposed to laying flat in yeah. the windswept appearance. Yeah. So I'm feeling pretty good. These are malignant cells. And so... Because of all of the confusion since the early 2010 decade right. regarding adenocarcinoma and adenocarcinoma classification, there are many people who would say, well, this is still an alveolar structure here. So this must be that new diagnosis. The infamous. The infamous new diagnosis, adenocarcinoma in situ. Adenocarcinoma in situ. I wonder why we as pathologists felt compelled to create such a term in the lung. It's an interesting question because I'm not sure it's a question that our oncologists are particularly concerned with. No. I don't think it's the patients with a small ground glass nodule measuring 1.2 centimeters that's been wedged out that's keeping them up at night. They're not treating those patients. I know. Those are resectable diseases. But, you know, somebody might say, look, pathology is about the deep analysis. It's about a commitment to everything we stand for as pathologists. We are born to classify. And one thing that's been missing in the lung, and 
nearly every other organ system has it. An in situ, an in situ disease. disease. We have squamous carcinoma in situ of in the lungs. But where is the adenocarcinoma in situ? It was left out. It was left out. So we got to bring it in. But I would say you have to have a lesion of adenocarcinoma in situ in order to make a classification. And the question will you'll be asked is, is this adenocarcinoma in situ? Is this minimally invasive adenocarcinoma, also known as MIA? MIA. That's also missing in action. <laughs> also missing in action. Just like Which AIS. Just like AIS. Yeah, no carcinoma in situ. Exactly. Or is this predominantly lipidic invasive adenocarcinoma, which can produce a ground glass nodule? So what we have to get to the bottom here is the fundamental definition of adenocarcinoma, adenocarcinoma in situ is malignant pneumocytes spreading across pre-existing alveolar walls. Are have to be normal or so close to normal you can't tell the difference. Right. The WHO says that you can allow a slight bit of expansion of the interstitium. Sclerosis, I believe, is, is, what, they, is what they describe. But this, the, the idea of in situ, of course, is that you have malignancy that has yet to breach the basement membrane, which means you should not be having much interaction with the underlying stromal, stromal component. So if that's your definition of adenocarcinoma in situ, we can look at this lesion, and I think you know it's not quite uniform uh, throughout. But if we look closer at higher power here, you, what you have to ask yourself is, does this look like a pre-existing alveolar structure? Meaning, if you erase the malignant cells, would this look like normal, normal lung. lung? I would say you'd be hard pressed with this image to say with certainty that you were in the lung. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be wondering exactly where you were, right? Yeah. So I, I completely agree with you. There is a significant amount of stromal response in redundancy. this Redundancy. I like to use the term redundancy because there's just too much stroma for the amount of glandular proliferation. Redundancy, and inflammatory cells, fibrosis. All of this is talking about the epithelial mesenchymal interaction that happens with invasive carcinomas. Right. And therefore, this cannot be adenocarcinoma in situ. Even though this has an appearance of looking like a ground glass lesion, and certainly this adenocarcinoma in situ might be on a radiologist differential diagnosis. Because of size, right? It has to be under three centimeters. This is under three centimeters. It's under so three centimeters. The imaging picture has to be a small lesion. This is a small lesion. Now, the distinction between MIA and adenocarcinoma in situ is that the invasive component, quote unquote, right. has to be five millimeters or more if you diagnose, or five millimeters or less to right. diagnose minimally right. invasive adenocarcinoma. It can't be six millimeters. It cannot be six millimeters. So here's our, our uh, reticulation right here, two millimeters. If this is invasive here and this is invasive up here, we easily exceed the five millimeter limit for yeah, minimally but you invasive can't add adenocarcinoma. Them up. You've got to find one focus that's six millimeters. And I think we probably can in here. Because if you have three millimeters over here and two over there and two over here, you can't push it up. You're not supposed up. to sum up. You're not supposed to sum them up. You need one focus where you're convinced there's six millimeters of invasion of stroma. And well, I think the vast majority of this lesion I think shows the whole lesion is significant invasive. stromal interaction, right. suggesting that this is all invasive adenocarcinoma, lipidic predominant. Right. So that brings us to our pearl. Pearl number four, I believe. Correct. Correct. Is that adenocarcinoma in situ does not exist. Practically speaking. Practically speaking. Because we all know we're pathologists. We're scientists. We're biologists. We understand this. Right. right? Of course, there is an adenocarcinoma in situ that begins somewhere. But from a practical perspective on a resection, especially on a needle core biopsy, you don't have to worry about diagnosing adenocarcinoma in situ because it is 
exceedingly rare. In fact, statistically, it doesn't exist. And the follow-up studies performed by the people who came up with the classification looked at a ton of cases around the world and came over up a with thousand. over a thousand cases and came up with two that they felt they could confidently call adenocarcinoma in situ. So you've done the calculation. How many years would a pathologist have to practice in order to see one case of AIS? The average pathologist seeing the average amount of lung biopsies in the United States, new diagnoses of adenocarcinoma, the average pathologist would have to practice for over 100 years before they saw their first case of pure adenocarcinoma in situ. So what you're saying is don't hold your breath to make that diagnosis. Yeah. Because 100 years is a long time to hold your breath. Just call them adenocarcinoma in situ. No. <laughs> Just call them adenocarcinoma, call them adenocarcinoma and walk adenocarcinoma away. And so, move on. Yeah, and you, you can put all kinds of descriptors in there saying that, you know, that there, are, there may be a lipidic component, but this exceeds the threshold for adenocarcinoma in situ of invasion as defined by stromal thickening fibrosis. I'll tell you that in Japan, even a little bit of fibrous proliferation in the interstitium with a lesion like this warrants the term invasion. Exactly. So to summarize, you've got malignant cells, you've got, you've got underlying interstitial abnormalities and reaction to those malignant cells. That's invasive adenocarcinoma. Now what if this lesion was abutting the pleura? We should probably do a pearl on this. We should do a pearl, for sure, on that one. So I hope you enjoyed this case, uh, pearl number four adenocarcinoma in situ from a practical perspective doesn't exist so you don't have to lose sleep at night over this diagnosis and um, hope you enjoyed it and please leave uh, comments below and look forward to hearing from you.